Good morning, y'all. So I woke up this morning prepared to, to watch Love and Hip Hop Atlanta and do my videos and all that other fun stuff that we do, but something was on my heart very heavy this morning. And even when I was walking the dog, I was trying to shape these feelings and these thoughts, but they actually just started getting more robust and bubbling over to the top. And it brought me to this point where I felt like the only way to relieve this pressure was to make a video and talk about it. And so I like to title this rant, Straight Black Men, Gay Black Men Are Not Your Enemy, right? And what has prompted this video is, you know, when you're on social media, you just see all of these outward and relatively ignorant displays of masculinity. And I'm talking about the, the, the photos of, you know, maybe some black men in a suit holding their hands up like this. And then you have the captions that say, you know, America won't show you this. An example of real black men. No gay shit. No this shit. No this. And it's like, whoa, you know, let's have a conversation here. I'm black and I've got a dick. Um, just by virtue of what it means to be a black man because I'm gay, am I not one? You know what I'm saying? So there, there, there's so many conversations that we need to have. One being the, the definition of what it is to be a man. I think as a community, I think we're kind of torn on that. But what I wanted to talk about more importantly is the fact that straight black men have a lot of ills that plague them as a whole. And now in 2019, we have created an atmosphere, an environment, uh, a, a situation where they are encapsulated with so much protection from the community that accountability has just gone out the window. Now, let me give my previous statement some historical context. To my brother's credit, yes, historically, and even present day, we live in a world where everything has been thrown at the black man, including the kitchen sink. Systems, protocols, and procedures have been put in place to strategically keep the black man down, target the black man, hurt the black man, and as a result of that, we as a community have had to create safeguards to keep our black men from becoming products of the system or to better yet keep them alive, okay? And this stems back from slavery, down to segregation, down to the Jim Crow South, down to the civil rights movement, down to the 70s, up until now. But here's what we haven't done. I believe it is reasonable to say that in 2019, the world is a much better place than it was during slavery, Jim Crow South, segregation, civil rights movement. Is that a fair statement? That being said, some of the protocols as a community that we've put in place that have been handed down from generation to generation to generation need to be reevaluated and updated. Because without having some of this historical context and without having some of the social ills plaguing us now that were plaguing us then, many of these brothers who have garnered some of the protection from the community have garnered it without any understanding of what it is, where it comes from, and it has now created a atmosphere where nothing is ever their fault. There is no accountability. John John is this way because he don't have no daddy. John John is this way because he go to a bad school. John John is this way because the gang bangs in the community. John John is this way because he come from a single mama. John John is this way because the mama is on crack. And don't get me wrong, all of these things are factors. But at what point is John John wrong because John John is simply wrong and somebody need to tell his ass, whoop his ass, whip him into shape somehow, or let the cards fall, 
where they may. The reason why I call this video Black Straight Men, Gay Men Are Not Your Enemy is because I've grown overtired with this narrative that there is this massive agenda to emasculate the black man and it starts with the gay man as if somehow we are being created in a science lab somewhere by a group of people who are plotting to take over the world one black man at a time. Like do some of y'all hear y'all selves? Gay people have been around since the beginning of time. There are no more black people, gay people on this earth today than there were yesterday. The only difference is the world has evolved to a place where a few safe spaces have been created for gay people to actually be themselves and they don't have to hide in the shadows where many of you would prefer us to be. That's all. So the first point that I want to make to the straight black man is that brother, we are your brother too. Simply put, we want what's best for you because what is best for you is subsequently what is best for us. Because hey, we are black men too. See, all of us don't wear wigs and dresses and lipstick and heels. Many of us look, sound, act like your brother, your father, your uncle, your co-worker. And what some of y'all fail to realize is that when we go out into the world with our jeans and our t-shirts and our Timberland boots and our hats to the back, the greater society can't tell if we're gay, straight, or in between. They see a black man. So the same issues that plague you, my brother, on a daily day basis, day to day basis, plague us. Not to mention, in addition to the external, outside of the community things that plague the black brother, we then have to come into the community and deal with the divisiveness, the abandonment, the religious prosecution, and everything in between from men, women, church, the village, and everything. But yet, we're the punks, we're the sissies, we're the faggots, and we're the weak ones. We endure everything y'all endure, and then some. This thought that the straight black man is a dying breed, and they need to watch out and beware because the faggots are taking over and the media is pushing the faggots to the forefront and the media is making the kids gay because they keep showing the faggots on TV. Y'all got to stop with that. Y'all got to stop with that. Toni Morrison once said, if you turn a glove inside out, it still has to be a glove. Using that analogy and applying it to this argument, if simply showing another human being examples of gayness, putting gays on TV, Jussie Smollett on Empire, the Derrick J's on reality TV, the Funky Dinevas on YouTube, if simply putting us on television, in magazines, and in the media is some bubonic plague that's going to turn everyone gay, then using that same logic, wouldn't it seem that the overwhelming majority of people would turn out straight because there are more straight characters, straight influences, heteronormative angle images on television than they are gay? Like, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and I know there are some of y'all out there who, in my opinion, are just the complete definition of 
walking insanity. And that goes for men and women because people can hand you a laundry basket full of facts and you're still going to make the conscious choice to believe what you want to believe because you just want to believe it and don't want to come up off that argument. But again, making it plain, if simply putting gay people on TV and in the media can make someone gay, then putting straight people on TV and in the media can make them straight. And if the overwhelming majority of images in the television and media are straight, then what is the worry? See, my brothers, what I think has happened is this zero accountability situation has created a situation where it's easier for y'all to blame everything else, everybody else versus looking within because you're so fragile. And that's another thing that we've got to talk about. And we'll talk about it in a later video, which is this fragile ass masculinity coupled with insecurity coupled with low self-esteem. And here's the thing, when we talk about esteem and insecurity, many times we talk about it as if it's a women's issue. Which brings me to my larger point. As a community and as a society, we have got to move away from this whole, these are women emotions, these are men emotions, and men don't do things that mimic women. Here is the difference between a man and a woman on the most granular level of it all, independent of all social constructs. Genitalia and hormones. If it is natural for a woman to feel sadness and want to cry, why is it unnatural for a man to feel sadness? and want to cry. And the reason why I bring up crying and emotions is because I ain't no doctor, I ain't no psychologist, but I do feel that a lot of the violence that goes on in the black community perpetrated by straight black men, there's a direct correlation between that and their inability to express themselves and to know what to do with all these bottled up emotions. Because from the time we push our little black boys out of the womb, the first thing we tell them is, boys, don't cry. What you crying for? Crying is being a girl. That's being weak. Here's the thing about emotions and about tears. They're a natural response to something. Where there's pain, there's an injury. We've got to now move to a place where it is safe that if any person, man, woman, flower pot, Mr. Kool-Aid, feels the need to cry or to express some sort of uh, emotion that conveys vulnerability, love, or lack thereof, that it is okay. Because I'm going to tell you what happens to young boys and men who are not allowed to cry. They become wife beaters. They become killers. They become shooters. Because the reality of the situation is all of that is energy and it's got to go somewhere. So if you're going to tell black community, if we're going to tell our black boys not to cry, not to be vulnerable, not to whatever, whatever. I need the second part of that memo that then tells us what they're supposed to do with that energy because it has to go somewhere and that energy is going to supersede your social construct. They put it into guns, they put it into violence, and then we insulate them with all these excuses and these lies to protect them from the man, which is no longer as large of a threat in 2019 as it was back then. I think, you know, black people as a whole, our biggest threat to our community at this time is ourselves. And it is time that these straight black men have a conversation with themselves. Not all of y'all, but many of y'all have made it known and made it loud and clear 
that you don't accept the gay black man. You don't want nothing to do with us. We're not a part of y'all. We're less than y'all. We're a subset of y'all. Y'all are over here. We are these niggas over there. And you know what? I think over time, many of us gay black men, unfortunately, we've grown to be okay with that. And here's the thing. If you look at movies like Pose, Ballroom, Culture, many of you won't because you're too straight. Um, gay black men being outcast of society and the community and gay black women as well. We figured out a way being the rejects and the outcasts to find love, camaraderie and brotherhood amongst each other. So considering the social ills that plague the straight black man, many of us are okay being excluded from y'all. Many of the problems that plague the black community, and we've got a lot, there's enough to go around, but many of the ones that plague the black community, particularly black men, are not coming from us. Fatherlessness is not coming from us. And the gang banging and the shooting is definitely not coming from the faggot in the heels with the 22 inch hair because that nigga over there too busy twerking. You know what I'm saying? It's not coming from us. Remember, you the ones that said we were too gay, too soft, and too weak to hang with y'all, to be a part of y'all. So we took that, we accepted it, and we came over here and we played dress up with one another and every other negative stereotype that y'all try to place upon the black community, despite the black gay community, despite the fact that we come in many different shades, genres, and preferences. We like football and hair, you know what I'm saying, and everything in between. It's not coming from us. Now, don't get me wrong, the gay, the, the gay black boys, we got our issues, the stealing and the scamming and some other stuff. But the killing and the robbing and the fatherlessness and the crime and the gang, that shit not coming from us. So, my question then lies in terms of what is public enemy number one for the black man. It is not the gay black man. For those of y'all who believe that there is just this big agenda to take you down and it starts with the black gay man, let me ask you a hypothetical question. What do you want us to do? Would you like Trump to rally us all up on a train and put us in a concentration camp, burn us all? And the question I then have for you would be, once he puts us all in a gas chamber in an internment camp, and we all disappear, what will be your new excuse as to what the problem is? Because my gut, my intuition, and just my sheer logic tells me that once you burn us all in the gas chamber, y'all still got a shitload of issues that exist and thrive independent of the black gay man. So moral of the story is, number one, we want to be your friend. Just as you guys want to be accepted by the larger world. Uh, what's the saying? Charity starts at home. We look like you. We are you. We understand you. And maybe on a kismet, cosmic level, if some of you guys practice acceptance at home, maybe the universe will reward you with acceptance at large. You see what I'm saying? Then I saw a quote one time that said, if you want equality, but you don't believe in accepting gay people, equality is not what you want, you want privilege. And that's the God honest truth. Now we can have a debate about being gay is right, wrong, born that way, a religious sin. We'll have that debate later. But just on the sheer surface, Equality is equality. Acceptance is acceptance. And many of y'all want from the larger world the very thing that you're not willing to give to the very people who look like you and who want to be a part of you. I think what many, gay, what many straight men don't realize, and this is across all color lines, is that growing up, little gay boys like myself 
All we wanted to do was be loved by y'all. Even now, all we want is a seat at the table of brotherhood. But y'all, many of y'all will not allow it. And it's learned behavior. You were taught this. And we get it. But as a result of it, y'all have then scapegoated us to be part of your issue. And it's not when we over here playing and makeup and twerking and dancing and listening to Beyonce. We're not your enemy. We're your friend. We're your brother. We're your cousin. We look like you. We love you. And we want to help. This is getting lengthy. But black, straight men, y'all have a conversation that y'all need to have amongst each other that doesn't involve us. And the two agenda items at the very top of the list need to be accountability and toxic masculinity slash redefining what it is to be a man. My name is Quentin Latham. Many of y'all know me as Funky Daniva, and that is my piece for the day. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'm about to go to Taco Bell and get three crunchy taco supremes, and I'll call y'all later. Bye.